Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing our 1858 clash between Henry Edward Byrd and Paul Charles Morphy and as you can see they've uh, switched colors now. Byrd finally has the white pieces and Morphy is now black uh, but like I said not all of the games from this encounter were saved uh, probably only only the nicer ones and this one uh, this is uh, one of the most famous games ever not only uh, one of Morphy's most famous games ever but uh, mo one of the most famous games uh, in general and uh, if you've uh, picked up a chess book featuring some maybe nicer games uh, from chess history, uh, chances are it, this game has been featured in that book. So uh, some of you have seen it, but I imagine most of you haven't. Uh, so uh, I, I, I do hope you, w you will enjoy it. Uh, without uh, further ado, Bird with the white pieces opens with e4. You might think, okay, he's Henry Bird, he might go for the bird's opening, but no, this is a bit too early for that. So here we have e4. Uh, Morphy replies with e5, we have knight f3, d6, and now d4. So Morphy goes for the Philidor's defense, and of course you uh, immediately charge in the center with the d4. And now f5, uh, this is the so-called Philidor's counter gambit uh, in, in the Philidor defense, and now knight to c3. Bishop to c4 uh, would, would be probably played nowadays as it offers white... Uh, uh, the, the most advantage, but okay, in those days, knight to c3, uh, we have f captures an e4, knight captures, uh, and now Morphy advances his pawns in the center, d5 attacks the knight here, knight goes back to g3, also uh, knight, uh, knight here would be possible, even capturing an e5 would be possible, as it offers white a very, very interesting play, for example, captures, captures, and uh, queen to h5 check, uh, poses a lot of problems for black, if g6, then you can capture here, and so on. So Morphy is really uh, testing out uh, uh, Henry's uh, ability to, you know, uh, calculate stuff, but he retreats with knight to g3, and now uh, we have e4. So Morphy really got some counterplay, and his gambit paid off. Uh, we have knight to e5, and now knight to f6. Morphy continues development, we have bishop to g5, that's not a g5, bishop to g5. Pinning the knight uh, and now bishop to d6. Not going bishop to e7. Morphy says there is no uh, no reason to uh, play defensively. We, we can just advance it all the way. Uh, and now knight to h5. Bird doesn't waste any time and he immediately wants to pile up on this knight here. So castles, Morphy defends it once again, and now, uh, while you could capture here, for example, knight captures, uh, black is very happy, just captures, and now both of your pieces are under attack, so not really gaining all that much, even though you bust open the king's defenses. So queen to d2 first, and now queen to e8, putting pressure on the knight as the queen just left the d1 square, so no longer defending the knight on, a, uh, on h5, and here... Uh, we have g4, just defending that knight. However, this allows Morphy to, to well, really uh, get a lot from the position. He starts with knight captures on g4, so he removes one of the defenders, uh, not one of the, the only defender of the h5 knight. Uh, we have knight captures on g4, and now queen captures on h5, attacking the knight on g4. So knight back to e5, and now knight to c6. And here, bishop to e2, attacking Morphy's queen. Uh, and when the queen moves, uh, well, bird is most likely to castle queen side. We have queen to h3, and now uh, first uh, a capture on c6. We have knight captures on c6. Uh, if you castle right away, uh, then you run into some, well, some unpleasant ideas. As the f2 pawn is undefended, you can go rook captures uh, on f2. So instead, uh, first knight captures on c6 was played, b captures, and now bishop back to e3, just defending that... Uh, uh, f2 pawn. So rook to b8 by Morphy, now attacking the b2 pawn and practically inviting white to castle and uh, this is exactly what bird does. He castles queenside, defends the b2 pawn with his king and now comes one of the most beautiful moves and one of the more, uh, well, one of the most beautiful ideas, uh, uh, you know, ever ever played uh, over the chessboard. Here Morphy strikes uh, with rook captures on f2. There are many other moves here. You could uh, just continue the game normal. You have very nice play. You have an open uh, b file to use for your attack. You can simply develop then double up rooks uh, on the b file. So there are many options here. However, Morphy goes for the immediate rook captures on f2 and it's a really weird move. Uh, because you're giving up the whole rook, and th there doesn't seem to be any immediate compensation for that rook, uh, or or compensation in general. Uh, so 
not not uh, accepting this rook sacrifice uh, doesn't really work for uh, for white if you try something like rook to g1 to put some pressure maybe here doesn't really work uh, because you can just play rook captures 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 and now there's no way to put any pressure if if, if bishop to h6 trying to put pressure on g7 then the bishop no longer guards the rook so you can capture it so there there's nothing here for white so after this rook captures on f2, uh, Bird had to capture the rook. So bishop captures on f2, but now comes Morphy's idea. And yes, we have reached the position from the thumbnail. Uh, Morphy plays queen to a3. And this is incredible. First a rook sacrifice, then a, a queen sacrifice, uh, as the title suggests. And uh, there's, uh, well, there are options here for white, but one of them is definitely not accepting the queen because that's just mate in one. Bishop captures on a3 delivers checkmate as the rook controls the entire b file and the king is in check. So what can you do here? Well, c3 was played, uh, trying to make at least some room defending the b2 pawn with the queen. And now comes queen captures on a2. So once again, how do you defend this position? It's not an easy position to defend, and there is only one good move for white here. For example, just to give you an idea, uh, if you try something like queen to c2 to maybe uh, go for a nice king wall, get your king to safety, it doesn't work because just bishop to f4 check. And now whatever you do just loses terribly, the king has nowhere to go, you'd have to block with the rook, but now just captures, and it doesn't matter if the queen or king captures, because if you capture with the king, then just rook captures on b2, uh, wins the queen, and if you capture with the queen, it's not much better, uh, because just queen a1 check, king to c2, and now rook captures on b2 delivers checkmate, as the pawn here now covers the d3 square. So uh, not possible. The only move that is possible in this position is the move Bird played, and that is b4. So uh, what what can you do here? Uh, well, Morphy continues uh, by checking the white king. We have queen to a1 with check, king to c2, and now queen to a4 with check. And now here we have a, a, a very interesting position where you can just repeat moves. You can go king to c1 uh, and then Morphy will have the option of either repeating with queen a3 check, king c2 and then queen back. Or he will have to try something, uh, either bishop to f5 trying to get some, uh, some counterplay here. But it would be the best idea for white. However, uh, Bird is up a whole rook and he definitely doesn't want to draw this game. He wants to, to win it. After all, he's down uh, by a lot in the match. So here, after queen to a4 check, he tried king to b2. And yes, this stops uh, all and uh, any checks with the queen. However, there is one move that Morphy has here. And that move, unfortunately for uh, Henry Bird, wins the game for black. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Morphy uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the only winning idea for black. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop captures on b4. And now you can see that this opens up the b file for the black rook and there is nothing the, the white king can do. Uh, for example, if you ignore the bishop and try something like rook to a1, you want to attack black's queen. Uh, it's, a, it's a very quick uh, checkmate, just bishop to a3 check, king a2 and bishop to c1 now opens up a discovery. The rook controls the entire b file and the white king is in checkmate. So after this bishop captures on b4, uh, Bird said, all right, uh, there is not much to be done here. We're going to give up the queen. So here we have captures, captures with check, captures, and now queen again captures with check. So uh, what, what can you do here? Uh, again, not much, uh, but you do have some counterplay. You still have two rooks and two bishops. And it's very interesting. Uh, there is another game, uh, aside from this one, that reached this position. If you've, uh, if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed I haven't said uh, uh, it is as of this move that we have a completely new game. Uh, because there is another game from 1998 that reached this exact same position and it ended in a draw. Uh, it was uh, a game between Arnaud Leclerc uh, and Nicolas Turpin uh, and uh, well I, I think what happened here was that the two of them were just you know trying to make a joke they wanted another game in the database to reach this position or maybe they were you know pulling uh, 
you know, trying to pull a prank on someone. I don't know. Uh, but it's very interesting that someone would do this and then agree to a draw in this position. However, Morphe's game against Bird, of course, continued from this position and King to C2 was played. So it is as of this move that this position has never been reached again and we are already at move 25. So that's, uh, you know, a, a, bit, a, bit, a, a bit interesting. Uh, and now Morphe needs a way to continue, as he only has a bishop and a queen against an army of white pieces against two rooks and two bishops, but Morphe easily finds the idea e3. He just opens up the path towards the white's king, and it's not going to be easy to stop this. You have to react to this because your bishop on f2 is under attack. Uh, so here Bert captures it, but now bishop to f5 check. And with the queen slicing all the way here, uh, you don't really have a lot of options here. If you go king to c1, queen to c3 is just checkmate. All of the squares are covered here. The bishop slices through here. So uh, after bishop to f5, you could block with the bishop. But here Morphe just had uh, queen to c4 check in mind. Of course, the queen cannot capture it because the queen king would be in check. You ha you'd have to move it. And then just bishop captures. And now it's actually black who is up material. So, uh, Bert tried one last uh, idea, rook to d3, at least he will be able to guard the rook with his king after queen to c4 check, but it doesn't help uh, all that much. Morphe continued with queen to c4 check, king to d2, and now comes queen to a2 with check. The king has to move, king to d1 was played, and now comes queen to b1 check with a double attack on the rook here, and also if the king moves the rook on h1 falls. So it was in this position on move 29 that Henry Edward Bird resigned the game and this wonderful, wonderful game was created that uh, with perfect play Bird could have drawn but uh, he's already down so much in the match and he wanted to try and win this game. I imagine because you don't miss... Uh, okay, first I'm going to show you what happens here uh, uh, because... Well, there's nothing you can do if you just capture it uh, or move the king, for example, bishop to c1, you can just capture on d3. And after captures, captures with check, of course, the queen uh, will be able to overcome the, the bishop and rook, especially with so many pawns here. And if you do something else like move the king, uh, just queen captures on h1 is sufficient for black to again uh, win the game easily. Uh, so yeah, after this uh, queen to b1 check, the game ended. And this beautiful, beautiful masterpiece was created. But this shock, this incredible idea that happened uh, way, way before uh, then Bird ever decided to, to try and pull off this win uh, happened very, very early on in the game uh, when Morphe, uh, after this, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Castles uh, played Rook captures on F2. This is, this is just incredible because Bird thought... Okay, I know uh, my bishop protects everything, this protected, this protected, there's nothing black can do. But Morphe just said, first I'm going to sacrifice the rook, and then I'm going to sacrifice my queen. Or, you know, just offer a queen sacrifice, and this is just, uh, this is pure art, and this is, uh, well, this is, uh, uh, amongst other things, uh, one of the reasons why I started really enjoying chess. Because I had some really old chess books from my grandfather, and, you know, it featured games like this, and I was like, wow. Uh, so yeah, uh, unfortunately for us, this is the last game we'll be showing uh, from the match Henry Bird versus Paul Morphy because only four games were recorded from this match. Uh, even though the final score of the match was, uh, well, out of the 12 games they played, uh, Morphy won 10 games, uh, drew one and only lost one to Henry Bird. Uh, I wish we had the one that uh, Bird won to, to show that one as well, but we don't. We only have these four. And unless they somehow somewhere resurface one day, uh, we are stuck with, with uh, these four. Now, uh, it's uh, hard to say where we are uh, continuing with uh, the Morphe saga. But uh, first, I just want to read you a very, very short letter. So this is it for the game. So those of you who just came for the game, that's it. Uh, but now I have one letter uh, I want to read for you. It's a letter from Paul Morphy uh, to Howard Staunton about the match and, uh, you know, why, why is it taking so long and when the match might happen. Uh, so uh, again, it's from Lawson's book. If you if you have a chance, uh, uh, try and get it. It's uh, you know uh, the biggest uh, ever collection of anything we know uh, on Paul Morphy. So the, the book is just basically a Bible on Morphy. So here it says uh, Morphy uh, uh, addressing Staunton. Dear sir, I first uh, I must first apologize for not replying to your previous communication. As you observe, my numerous contests uh, must be the excuse for my remissness. 
Uh, it is certainly a high compliment to so young a player as myself uh, that you, whose reputation in the chess arena has been unapproached during so many long years, should require any preparation for our match. Uh, immediately on my arrival in England, some two months since uh, I spoke to you in reference to our contest and in accepting the challenge, you stated that you should require some time to prepare and you proposed a period for commencing which I accepted. I am well aware that you uh, that your many engagements in the literary world must put you to some inconvenience in meeting me and I am therefore desirous to consult your w uh, wishes in every respect. Uh, would you please state the earliest opportunity when those engagements will permit the match coming off, such time being consistent with your previous preparation? Uh, the few weeks referred to in your favor seem to be rather vague and I shall feel highly gratified by your fixing a definite period for the contest. I leave the terms entirely to yourself. I remain, dear sir, yours very respectfully, uh, Paul Morphy. So this is what uh, Morphy sent to uh, to Howard Staunton. However, Staunton uh, did not reply to the letter, and he uh, left. Uh, he left. Uh, uh, he left London, uh, uh, leaving Morphy w without a reply. And uh, well, uh, he did mention that uh, he, uh, that Morphy should not uh, join the uh, the great b uh, tournament that will take place in Birmingham and uh, that he also will not attend this tournament but morphy said that even if uh, even if staunton were to play in the uh, birmingham uh, tournament that uh, meeting him in a tournament would not be as concise as meeting him uh, uh, in a match over a game let's say over 12 games or you know because i mean uh, meeting staunton is why morphy came to england in, in the in the first place of course he wanted to play other masters as well but he wanted to play the absolute best uh, and howard staunton was that so uh, the problem is uh, after you know some time uh, and before the Birmingham tournament uh, commenced, uh, Staunton actually applied to play in the tournament. Uh, however, he said that uh, Morphy shouldn't apply and that he should just wait uh, for uh, for Staunton to accept this challenge. And Morphy said that uh, he he doesn't really want to apply for the tournament and he said that he's gonna only arrive in Birmingham uh, after the tournament actually starts uh, because he. Uh, he feels that he will not be able to control himself if if he's uh, has the opportunity to enter the tournament he's going to enter the tournament so what happens in birmingham and uh, what uh, well what happens next in our saga will be addressed in the next video the next video will uh, you know um uh, uh, we're going to talk about the events that took place uh, at the Birmingham tournament. Uh, probably, I don't know if we'll be showing any games, but we might. Uh, but mostly to discuss what happens. And then we're going to see where we are heading with the Morphe Saga. Will the match against Taunton take place? Or maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it won't. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, you know, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. As this is one really, really famous game. Uh, you know, do show it to everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Boris Radenchak, uh, Mustafa Hussein, a mystery person, John Earhart, and William Gould for contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.